In this video, we will be discussing poultry. I will be providing an overview of poultry, specifically on chicken. Poultry is the general term used for domesticated birds bred for eating. Generally, poultry is the least expensive and the most versatile of all entree dishes. We have to be especially careful with poultry as salmonella naturally runs through the intestinal tract of chicken and turkeys. Therefore, all chicken and turkey classes must be cooked to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. There are six categories of poultry recognized by the USDA. In this video, we will present an overview of all of these items. However, we will specifically talk about chicken. In the following video, I will touch on duck, goose, guinea, pigeon, and turkey. Chicken is by far the most popular and widely eaten of all poultry items. It's inexpensive, it's readily available, it really comes in all varieties and forms. It contains both light and dark meat, it's relatively lean, you can get it fresh, you can get it frozen, you can get it already breaded, prepared and cooked, uh, ready to go with a hot rotisserie. It's extremely versatile. Here you can see the chicken up top. This is a whole chicken. This is a small chicken, probably about two and a half to three pounds. This is the leg or drumstick. The thigh then is right behind it, attached to the body. And then you have the breast running on top and the wings are down below here. The back and the ribs are usually used for stock. There are several chicken classes, which just means different categories and different names given to each of the chickens depending on how old they are and how much they weigh. The first category you'll see here is for game hens. They're usually one to two pounds on the average and they're five to six weeks old. Broiler chickens, or the fryers then, are one and a half to three pounds. These are the small ones that we get in when we're practicing to fabricate chicken in our culinary classes. These are usually about 13 weeks old. Roasters then are three to five months old. These are the three and a half to five pound chickens. Most often what you'll find at the grocery store. However, I found they usually are a little bit larger, more on the six to eight pound averages. This next slide shows you some more uncommon chicken classes. These are usually more mature, more older chickens. You have a capone. Here is a castrated male under eight months old, five to eight pounds average. And then a hen chicken or a stewing chicken, which is a mature female over 10 months old, usually in the three and a half to six pound range. You have a rooster, which is a mature male over 10 months old, four to six pounds average, and a poussin, which is a small Cornish game hen under one pound. It is the smallest of the chickens. All poultry has a similar muscle composition to where 72% of it is made up of water, very similar to our meat composition. 20% of it then is protein, 7% fat, and 1% other minerals. It does contain a lot of fat going around the muscles, but no intramuscular fat, meaning no marbling, no fat going in between the muscles. Fat is stored instead under the skin and in the abdominal cavity. Poultry fat has a lower melting point than other animal fats, meaning it melts very quickly and usually is used in cooking to baste and keep things moist. As with other meats, age affects the tenderness of the chicken. The more movement, as well as the older the bird, the more tough the meat will become, however, the more flavorful. In chicken, we have dark meat versus light meat. The dark meat is found in the legs and thighs. However, in flight birds, such as duck and others that we'll be talking about in the next video, the entire body is made of dark meat. Dark meat contains more myoglobin. It contains more fat and connective tissue. It is considered the fattier meat of chicken. It does take longer to cook. However, it is juicier, it is more flavorful, and can be used in a variety of different cooking methods. The light meat then, or white meat, 
is found in your breast meat, your tenderloins, and your wings. It definitely cooks quicker and is very lean, so it dries out very easily. Poultry is a great choice for your protein items. It is economical in that it is relatively inexpensive. Chicken and turkey breasts are both lower in fat and higher in niacin than other lean meats. The dark meat, which does contain more fat, but it does have more niacin and riboflavin, and it generally is comparable to other lean red meats. All chicken must be inspected by the USDA. All chicken and poultry items in general that are produced for public consumption fall under this category. Poultry that is processed must be done so under strict sanitary guidelines and as a reminder, the same as meat, Inspection is checking for the wholesomeness of products and ensuring that they are fit for human consumption. Grading then, similar to meats, is now checking for the quality. USDA grades A, B, and C apply to poultry items. Grade A ensures that that poultry is free of deformities. It has a nice thick flesh with well-developed fat layers. It's free of pin feathers and free of cuts, tears, broken bones, or any damaged meat. Grades B and C then are used primarily for processed poultry products. The USDA grade A mark that you see on the top right is extremely important. This should be on every package of poultry you purchase. Speaking of purchasing, there are many, many ways to purchase poultry items. Hawking chicken. You can first separate it between buying fresh versus frozen. Fresh chicken has a very short shelf life. It must be used within a few days. Frozen chicken then will need to be properly thawed and will add a few days as to when the product is available. However, if items are individually quick frozen, as you'll see below, they are much quicker to just pull out what you need and be able to thaw them very quickly. How you can buy your chicken then, again, either fresh or frozen, it could be whole, meaning the entire bird, or it could be cut up. Each chicken produces one whole breast or two lobes. So if you see split chicken breast, that is referred to two individual chicken breasts. It also has two legs, two thighs, and two wing sections. Each wing section then has a tip, has a drumette, and a paddle. The leg and thigh can be left together, and that would give you a leg quarter. The wing can be still attached to the breast, and that could give you a front quarter piece. Just the first section of the wing left attached to a boneless, skinless chicken breast is called an airline supreme. Again, there are many variations of products you can find with an entire chicken fabricated. Next, bone-in or boneless. Depending on what it's being used for, boneless is a more convenient product. However, bone-in is going to be a better product to cook with and that you'll develop a lot more flavor. It depends what the needs are. Portion control. Portion control specifically for chicken breasts. You can get four ounce chicken breasts, five ounce chicken breasts, six, seven, eight, whatever size you're looking for. They're gonna cost more because they're very specific, but they're very uniform in size. They help control your cost as well as the consistency in your products. However, if you've got a case of random chicken breasts, this might be 10 ounces and above, huge chicken breasts that you have the means of breaking them down into smaller chicken pieces, and the price is gonna be a lot less for that case of random chicken breasts versus the ones that are exactly six ounces. And then again, individually cooked frozen. Do you want them frozen or are they remaining fresh? And really how are they packaged is important as well. Is it cryovac or is it open in a bag? Uh, chicken juice is definitely something you don't want leaking all over your cooler. You can also buy chicken in the ground form, as well as prepared and convenience items. I've mentioned before 
you can buy fully cooked chicken, grilled chicken or roasted chicken. You can also buy breaded chicken, such as your chicken tenders and your chicken nuggets, or even as far as to buy a rotisserie chicken ready to serve that night for dinner. In storing poultry, it's extremely important to make sure that you're following the right steps. Poultry is a potentially hazardous food item or TCS product. It is highly perishable, but more importantly, it is a well-known spreader of salmonella to other products. You always want to store chicken on the bottom shelf, never above any other products. You want to make sure that you're storing it at 32 to 34 degrees, not right inside the cooler door. And if you need to thaw chicken, ensure that you're thawing it under refrigeration on a tray to avoid any juices spilling onto the floor. In regards to the doneness, TTJJ refers to temperature, touch, joints, and juice. In large birds, as you're roasting them, the internal temperature must reach 165 degrees. It is best to take the temperature in the thickest part of the inner thigh, away from the bone but this would be the last part to fully cook. In smaller birds, it's a little more difficult to take that temperature as there isn't as much meat to put a thermometer probe through. So instead, we can look at the looseness of the joints. As you're wiggling the joints, typically they will just separate and the meat easily separates off the bone. The juices would run clear and it would be firm to the touch. Again, checking the temperature by touch, by the looseness of the joints, and the clearness of the juices. There's also a term called trussing that refers to when you are tying up the entire bird so it has a more uniform appearance and it cooks more evenly. When cooking whole birds, the main problem is overcooking the breasts. They end up being very dry. A couple tips is to roast the breast down for part of the cooking. Initially start with the bird upside down. That way the breasts are slowly starting to cook while in moisture. Then halfway through, invert it so these breasts can really start to get nice and crispy on the outside skin and fully cook while still maintaining a lot of that moisture. You could also baste often with fat. If you've made a large turkey, it's recommended to baste every 20-30 minutes. This is where you're sucking up that juice that's in the pan and then squirting it back onto your turkey to keep it nice and moist. Barding is where you, again, are adding fat. I typically will make my turkey where I take butter and add different herbs, uh, the Italian dried herb blends and garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper, mix it together and I shove that under the skin. That's a form of barding. I'm adding fat on the outside so that it can keep penetrating through the meat and keep it nice and moist as well as adding flavor. You could definitely cook it separately. You could break down your, your poultry item, your chicken, your turkey. You could break these items down and cook them separately. That way when the breasts are done, you can remove them rather than waiting for the entire bird to completely cook. And then trussing, again, we just talked about in the last slide, is a technique where you are tying the bird together so that it cooks more evenly and has a better looking product at the end. This concludes this video. In our next video, we will discuss other types of poultry. Thank you.